The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available, pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. InnerQuest explores various pathways through which you can connect with the infinite wisdom of the universe and apply it to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. This program, featuring accomplished practitioners, educators, and authors, is provided by Infinity Foundation, an innovative center for holistic studies and research. We invite you to share this journey with us. Hello, welcome to InterQuest. My name is Jay Stone, your host for today, and our guest is Joshua Shapiro. Welcome, Joshua. Thank you very much, Jay. Pleasure to be here. Joshua is a crystal skull explorer. Uh, Joshua is also the chairman of the board for the World Mystery Research Center, co-author of two books, and working on a crystal skull feature film. Now, Joshua, can you tell our audience what a crystal skull is? Well. If the camera will focus on our friends here, this is an example of what uh, we call a quartz crystal skull. Are we talking about the, the big one here? Well, all of them are quartz crystal skulls. Oh, I they, see, but they're different colors. They're, so it's different colors of quartz? Yes, like we have amethyst, we have smoky quartz, and we have rose quartz here. But also crystal skulls are being referred to other gemstones beyond quartz that are also being carved in the shape of a human skull. Mm -hmm. So. And with crystal skulls, there are three different types that we discuss in the crystal skull community. There's ancient crystal skulls, which are ones that were made like 2,000 years ago, 5,000, 10,000. We, we really don't know because there's no way to really date quartz crystal. And, and um, what cultures, what civilizations well, or countries were well, carving out crystal skulls? Well, the Mayans definitely are one of the uh, few indigenous cultures in the world that definitely speak about the crystal skulls and have knowledge about it. But I've actually met some Native Americans too, not too many, but some that know about the crystal skulls and also the, the Aztec. So Mesoamerican cultures primarily, but even I've heard an Aborigine in Australia also acknowledge the crystal skulls. So I think they're kind of a worldwide phenomenon. And why would anybody want to own a crystal skull or learn about a crystal skull? Jay, that is the $10 billion question. Okay. But I think what the answer is, is that from the research that we've done, I mean, the most simplest way I can explain it is when the crystal skull is brought to life, and we talk about in our new book, Journey of the Crystal Skull Explorers, which hopefully will be published in the near future. When you say we, did you write that with a co-author? Yes, uh, my partner in Holland, Blue Arrow Rainbow. She was the co-author of the book. So what happens is in our research that we've done, we've actually measured that there's like an electromagnetic energy field that's around the crystal skulls. What, what do you use to uh, measure the electromagnetic energy? Uh, actually, in, uh, there's two different ways to measure it. There are actual devices that are sensitive to electromagnetic waves, or the other technique we used that was very successful is what's called a meridian stress test system. It's a device that has electrodes that measures the meridian energy on the hands and the feet, and we're able to see the change when a person is in the presence. So of the you're, skull. you're thinking of possibly using the crystal skulls for healing? They have been used for healing. They've been used to develop one's spiritual gifts. They've affected people's dreams. Some people have visions. Uh, the big skull was around me when I wrote this new book and it kind of helped to create a, a really nice environment for the writing. Many, how, how many, many How many skulls do you own? Well, these are the ones that I have for right now, but within the last like two or three weeks I was gifted two new ones. One I didn't bring out yet because it's not quartz crystal and I have no clue why my friend gave it to me. So mm -hmm. I have to kind of work with it and check it out. Okay, but and well how do you work with the crystal that well, your friend gave you? Uh, what some people will do just with crystal skulls in general is they'll do a meditation mm -hmm. or what I'll, I like to do is, because see they talk with me. 
Now, maybe your listeners might go, is Joshua sane? Is he crazy? No, there's like a living consciousness that gets associated with the skulls, and they tell you where they want to go or what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, could I do this as an example because this happens all the time? Sure, go ahead. This one says, please hand me to Jay. Okay. So while we're doing the interview, Jay, that one would like to be with you. Oh, okay. Okay, and that one, I just got its name when I was in L.A. I was kind of meditating with music with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a strange name, but this is what I got. The king, the one who shows the way. Okay. So that's the name of the skull. But all the other ones here also have names. Do you want to... Uh, Reveal introduce them okay so right here this little one the rose quartz skull is called little indian princess which is kind of named after blue arrow rainbow now is there are different male skulls and female yeah skulls? this one is a female skull this big one here has always been a male skull for me however three people in my last trip through the southeast of america said that it now has the energy of the womb from the mother earth so now he has both a masculine and feminine energy his name is Portal de Luz, or Portal of Light. This is Geronimo Golden Eagle Eye, which also was the favorite skull I had for an Indian chief from Missouri. And the last one is called Purple Starbright. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the five skulls that I've brought is, today. Is there uh, a, a reason that this one's named Purple Starbright? Well, Blue Arrow Rainbow, actually, I sent her a picture, and I always like to work with her to, to help come up with names, so she called it that. But the skull told me the real name is Zippy One Eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so All right. I use both names. Well, uh, so w what does a small uh, s crystal skull cost? Oh, I think probably people can go on eBay and buy little ones like that for maybe between 40 to $60 or something like that. Okay. Maybe less. And what does the large skull cost? A large one could be over $1,000. Okay. It's based on the weight. So this is like 10 pounds. That's less than a pound. Now, the uh, Indiana Jones movie, uh, refresh my memory what the new, uh, the new mo Indiana Jones is. Title? Well, the title was Indiana Jones and the C Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And were you involved in some way with that movie? Uh, no, actually, I wasn't directly involved with the movie itself, although that doesn't preclude that the writer of the film didn't get a hold of my book, the first one, Mystery of the Crystal Skulls Reveal, which you actually have a copy here. Yeah, let me just uh, show this to the audience if Jen can right. get a shot of that. Right, this is the first book that we did back in 1988. Now, is there much interest in your book? Oh, yes. I mean, I have contact from people all over, and, you know, every time I travel, I bring a box and it's gone. Are, are there... Um, <laughs> Uh, some countries where there's a greater interest in skulls than others? Yes. Uh, I've done a lot of work in Europe, and England is a very uh, strong country for crystal skulls. Uh -huh. And believe it or not, also Hungary. In mm -hmm. Hungary, we did an international festival there last year, October of 2007, and over 600 people came. And it's like they hardly ever heard of crystal skulls before. And we had people coming that were like peasants from far, far away who you would never suspect would be interested. So that was kind of interesting. So I never know. Australia, too, the most famous crystal skull in the world, the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull of Love, the uh, caretaker, he lives in Indiana. He just went there, and they were getting a big response there. So I'd say Australia, too, is pretty interested. Mm -hmm. And what kind of uh, pr uh, presentations or lectures are, are given at this conference? Well, what we do at our festivals is we invite all different kind of speakers to come to tell their story about their experiences with the crystal skull or what they think they're about or their theories about who made them, where did they come from. But also we bring in a lot of different people with different skulls so people can have a direct experience. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if we had time to get into really in depth some of my stories, which we get into in our new book that hopefully will be out next year. Well, why don't you tell one story from your new book? Uh, okay, uh, a lot of people who watch this are very interested in the paranormal. So crop circles is one of the new things that people have become very interested in, whether they're real ones or, you know, are they being created by another intelligence. Mm -hmm. What we did is we took this big skull here, Portal de Luz, Portal of Light, we handed him to Blue Arrow Rainbow. She sat in the intersection. We were working with a crop circle researcher. She sat at the intersection of what are called two ley lines, energy lines from the earth. Mm -hmm. And what happened is she started to do a meditation. And then there was another energy line that was coming in from directly behind her. 
It's split into two pieces. I asked a researcher, have you ever seen that before? He said, no. That's the first time I ever saw an energy line split into two well, pieces. Well, when this energy, energy line split into two pieces, was it something physical, something metaphysical, something on an energy?